ombre, so beautiful, right? But it can be hard, right? Let me make it easy. I'm gonna simplify and show you how you can complete the application in just two steps. It's gorgeous. Let's get started. Well, I spent the morning doing some ombre and I saved one finger to show you how to do it. Many have commented since I started selling my, I don't have it here, the easy gel kit. And I wanna show you how to do my ombre my way. Really, really simple, but absolutely stunning. Now this method I'm gonna show you will apply to any shape, any size that you're doing. So first thing, as we do with any nail we're doing, we wanna buff it up. So I'm just gonna buff up this finger that I saved. Okay, I'm gonna take away all the dust. Now in my easy gel kit, if that's what you have, with anything that you're doing, you want a base or a primer or something that's being able to hold the hybrid gel to your nail. Many people call it poly gel, and that is the first brand that came out with it as of recent, but it's actually called hybrid gel. Poly gel is a brand name. So with mine, I'm gonna put on the base, the primer, uh, what I call it bridge. And the reason why I called it bridge is because it bridges a gap between the natural nail and the product you're putting on. It holds them together. Just as a quick tip when you're putting this on, you kind of burnish it on. Just don't swipe it on. You do it quite thin. You just wanna burnish the nail, making sure you get every little bit. with my little tiny mini light, I'm gonna give it a 60 second cure. Okay, so this is where the tip comes in. I'm gonna put the form on. Now every nail, when you're doing it, you have an idea of your structure, your length, and your shape, and your thickness all in mind. I'm just gonna get this form on and then I'll explain. Okay, this is my ring finger now. Let me turn it completely sideways. You can see this way, where the white and the pink is. The pink is coming over from the cuticle, and then it starts to fade after it hits the apex, it starts to fade into the white, All right? I'm gonna turn it sideways. That's how thick we want the nail, and then it's gonna taper into a nice thin here. So it's almost like you can cut the nail in half, cut it right in half, right there. This side's gonna be all white, and this side is gonna be all pink. But we are going to layer on top of each other or so it's gonna seem. So even though that's the harmony of one nail, that's the shape of one nail, we're actually taking two pieces of color and putting them together. We're gonna to lay down the white first and it's very, very strategic. Now with hybrid gel, the beauty of hybrid gel, it has the benefits of acrylic and the benefits of gel combined into one product. The benefits of acrylic is you sort of form it into this putty-like, quite easy to shape. It's not very sticky and it doesn't dry, or pardon me, it does dry really quick. That's the downfall. But you got this putty and you can shape it. It doesn't run on you if you get the ratio right. Then it's like gel because you cure it only when it's ready. That's the huge advantage. So this is gonna sit there and wait until you're finished shaping it. So with this method, we're almost cutting out the filing because you're gonna be so precise on how you layer in your ombre, you need very little shaping. And when you're working with hybrid gel, you can take all the time you want in shaping it and almost eliminate the filing. You're almost eliminating a whole step. But when I talk about two steps of application to get the ombre look, this is what I mean. Okay, so just lay down some white. I've got to get the other end off. Okay, so what we're going to do is strategically lay down the white. Almost perfect. I mean, nothing's perfect, but you know what I mean. <laughs> as close to what you want as a final look as possible. My Easy Gel is such an ombre white because I designed it soft and natural looking. I don't like stark white. Now we want this layer to be thin for two reasons. 
because it does have some pigment in it and we want it to cure right through. And two is, it is the first layer of the ombre. So it is the base layer that we're going to see through once we lay the next color on top. It's part of the design. We're not gonna cover it completely, but it is part of the design. I do have a video about working with hybrid gels and the five mistakes that we do make. Um, so you can check that out too. I just made that recently. Just thought of it when I'm doing this because over flooding is a big problem. Okay, so what I'm doing is actually working on the almost the exact length that I want, the exact shape that I want. So this, I turn it over like this. This is the angle I'm used to doing it because I'm working mostly on clients. And when I do myself, sometimes I'll do this too, just to make sure I've got the symmetry. But it's a good way to make sure that you're all even on both sides and I'm clearly not, so I'm just trying to fix that. We want this layer to be very even We don't on top. We don't want it to be bumpy like this. We want it to be quite smooth on top and I'll show you sideways when I get there. So spend time here, and it's okay. If you sculpt with product, you file much less. Otherwise we could pile it all on, but this design really doesn't like that. Ombre is very, very particular of where the products go. It's very, very important. It's a little harder too, because you're fading colors, right? That can be hard. So I just need a tiny bit more. There's a little bit on my paddle, so I'm just going to put it there. Now, when you are blending this area up here, I do like to fade this. It makes it easier in the long run. And I also like to make sure it has a little bit of thickness where the natural nail is the free edge meets the natural nail on the nail bed because when that free edge starts, if you get too much of the product lined up to the free edge, it can look like a soft, soft, super soft French. But we want this to look like an ombre where it's blending into the two. So we do not want the white to stop abrupt. So I'm gonna take the time and I'm gonna fade this. You can see how little liquid I'm using, which is just alcohol, right? It's really important. Only add some more alcohol when it gets too sticky to move. But I find you can work with it quite a lot with just the one dip of alcohol. Okay, so I'm pretty much liking that shape, I think. I'm just gonna measure it to the other ones. Yeah, it's the right same length. Okay, that's pretty much where I want it. Now I'm gonna nuke this. It's a nice thin layer of white. Then we can remove the form and then we can do the pink. Okay, let me move the form. So I have added the white in a very, very thin layer. From the tip fading into the free edge, slightly fading. We're gonna do the opposite now. I'm putting it into the cuticle and fading into the tip. But this is where we're going to have our apex and we're going to shape the whole nail so that it comes. It's like two pieces. We're putting it together to come as one. So remember, this is where we're heading. The white is in. This is what it looks like now. The white is in. Now we have to put the second piece, which is the whole shape of the nail, capping it with the top cap. Okay. So I'm going to clean the end of this paddle because I don't want any white in there. for the pink. I am probably one of the luckiest snail technicians in the world. I started a YouTube channel about, how long is it ago? Six or seven years ago, cameraman? Seven. Seven years ago. Um, just showing my tips on how to do it for students that I was trying to get for my future classes. And now I'm in a position that was using great products. Now I'm in a position to design my own great products. And that's what I did when it came to my easy gel kit and I'm designing the pink. One of my favorite things to do as a nail technician was mixing 
different pinks together to get different shades and different opacities. So when I designed my Easy Gel, I made Susie's Pink Mix. In my salon, I used to mix a certain two pinks together to get a little bit of opacity so you couldn't see all the way through it, and another pink so you could see through it. That's what I did here. And this is why it's so important when you're doing ombre to have that pink. So it's just enough light to get through to have that translucent, light, airy look on the nail, but it's solid enough, has enough opacity that you can't see through the whole thing. And that's why the ombre works. If you could see right through it, and if this was a clear pink, you'd see the white under there and it doesn't look as good. So you want some opacity and that's why I'm so proud of this particular pink. And the color is gorgeous. So I'm gonna scoop out a little bit and you can see, see how pretty it is? It's got just enough clarity to see how beautiful it is and then just enough opacity to cover our white where it's faded. That's what gives it a beautiful, flawless ombre look. You know, I'm gonna get my tube here so it's easy for cameraman to focus when I'm trying to put this down on here. So with a little bit of alcohol on my brush, I'm just gonna spend some time here really carefully shaping out this whole thing. Now the key part on your pink is making sure the apex, right from the cuticle, it wants to start right away, coming up. The highest point coming across your apex, okay? We want to bring it right down to the sides. Now remember the hybrid gel does not cure like acrylic in the air. And the hybrid gel does not cure like gel until you put it under the lamp. So you can spend all the time you want in this creation part. Now I'm taking that edge and I am just blending it out toward the white. See how nice that's looking? Now don't nuke this, don't cure it until you're happy. If you find there's too much, you can take some stuff off and you can put it back into the dish if you're using it for yourself. Even if you're, you know, everything is sterilized and clean. Anything that touches the skin though, you don't wanna be putting it back. But if you're DIYing this, yeah, you can. So where you get messed up in an ombre is where the white and the pink meet. The ends are not a problem. Cuticles, not a problem, and the tip part is not a problem because those are solid in color. It's when these two come together, that's where you run into trouble. So if your white is too high or if your pink is too thin and the wrong color, not being enough opacity, you're gonna see all that white as the pink comes over top, right? So you wanna make your white nice and thin, but solid near the end because you wanna see that. So as it approaches near the free edge, near the apex, as the pink comes near the apex, the pink has got to be thick enough to come over top, and opaque enough, to come over top of that white, and then you softly feather it. That's where the ombre comes in. It's a work of art. Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't that beauty? Mm -hmm. See, two steps. That's application, of course. Two steps. Your white, and then your pink comes together and it's done. Now we'll do very, very little filing. You can see it's pretty much shaped. It's pretty much done. Cuticle looks very good too. That's because I'm good at cuticles. Mm -hmm. I better be. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's nuke it and then we're gonna file it up and I'm gonna show you how quick the filing is. Okay, so with hybrid gels, you wanna remove the dispersion layer with some alcohol. And now we can start filing. I do recommend wearing a mask, especially when you're using gels or hybrid gels because they are a bit of a finer dust than acrylic. Acrylic is a bit heavier, so it does fall, but there's lots of fine dust flying around. So it's a good idea to wear a mask. 
it's a good habit. Okay, so we are just going to file this and shape it up pretty quick. You're basically just blending your pink, the top layer that you just did, into the shape of the nail that you want, blending it to the tip. Just going right to blend it to the white. Okay, and I'm gonna get some hand files and start shaping that up. Little pro tips that I do just before I'm ready to top coat I will take my new little bit here and I will go around the cuticle making sure I have really good cuticle separation which means no product is touching the skin or even close to and I'm just making it nice and smooth so when the gel coats rests it rests right in there butted up to the cuticle but not touching and you just don't want it high in here you want it nice and smooth so I'll just gently go in this area right here You don't have to do this, it's just an extra little step. And if you want, you could take it underneath because I like to pinch my form really tight. I can just file out just the little parts right in there. Make it nice and smooth. It's pretty flush. I made it pretty flush to my natural nail, but just the sides because I pinch it in. Okay. Oh, and one more pro step. I will take my Arbor Band fine or medium grit and I'll go over top back and forth and smooth over the entire nail just before I top coat. I just find when I skip this step, sometimes certain polishes with a lot of frosted or colors in them in the like glitter, like a fine, like a frosted glitter, you can see it's not quite as smooth. If you go over this, if you're doing chrome or any polish that is going to highlight any little height difference that's not perfect, you will see it. So I find I go over the entire nail very gently with this and it makes an excellently smooth finish. It also makes it very easy for the polish, gel polish that is, to adhere to the nail. But go back and forth, that'll maximize your time and make it super smooth. It's one of my favorite steps. Okay. Yeah, that's lovely. And I'll take my fine file just for a smooth finishing and go gently underneath to make sure it is all really happy under there. And then I'll finish off on the sides. Beautiful. Okay, and then I will take a lint pad and just remove any of the dust and if I find it's not drying fast enough because I'm incredibly impatient I will take another one and just dry it <laughs> okay let's get that top coat on oh so pretty Just love it. And I find with top coats too, and not just mine, but it seems like with every top coat, sometimes if you hold it upside down for about two, three, four, five seconds, it makes it a smoother finish. Okay, give it a good nuke. And I know I put reveal top coat on, but let's check out the reveal. Honestly, so satisfying. Still one of my favorite designs. I just love them. So remember, rewind this video back and watch it again. It's in the details, right? Just take your time, take a breath. Don't try to think you can tack it all at once. Just break it down in those two separate steps, making the first one very thin and then the apex in the color. 
and you'll get it. Just give it time. If you want to check out some mistakes that you can make easily with hypergel, we all make them. I've made them. That's why I made this video to show you how to avoid them and how to fix them. Check it out.